Hey, my name is Ronald Streif, but you can simply call me Joe, and super awesome that you're here today. Since you might still be undecided which career path to choose, whether it's data engineering or data science, let's talk about the differences between those two and see which one might fit you better. For those of you who don't know me, I've been working as a software engineer for more than 15 years and switched to data science and data engineering about four years ago. And I'm here to share the few little things that I picked up along the way with you. Let's talk first about uh, what the data engineer and data scientist usually do in projects. So let's start with the data engineer. So I'm the data engineer now. So in my opinion, there are four main areas where the data engineer is working in. So the first one would be to build data processing pipelines. And by that, I mean to ensure that each and every step of the data pipeline fits together nicely, that there is like a good integration, that there is error handling to handle all those failure scenarios that might happen while ingesting, transforming, processing, and storing uh, data for other use cases. And also in this regards, another role of the data engineer, another responsibility is to implement highly scalable data transformations. Ingestions or data ingestions might be for a huge volume of data, maybe several gigabytes or maybe even terabytes a day. And you need to be able to handle those, to process those, you need to work with cluster environments and you need to implement those transformations in a way that is actually scalable and is uh, well suited for the amount of data that uh, yeah, might be incoming. So the third thing that I think that um, the data engineer is um, responsible for is to automate processes. And by that, I mean, uh, as I said, building the pipeline, but also ensuring that there is a staging concept for the data as well as the code. And that that, that staging process is also fully automated as well as the data processing pipelines. In an ideal scenario, you want um, that your data pipelines work automated, maybe using streaming, maybe using batch, but you want to ensure that the data is processed, I don't know, every day, every other day, maybe weekly, whatever fits uh, your use case scenario, but you really don't want to have a person to really press any buttons or whatsoever, but you want to schedule everything. You want to make sure that everything runs through fully automated. And also on the code level, you really want to ensure to have things like CICD in place so that whenever you push code to a version control repository like GitHub or so, that that code gets built, gets deployed, gets tested and so on and so forth. And you also want to make sure that uh, you also consider the data because on different staging environments, uh, you might need different behaviors for ingestion the data. So for example, on a development system, you probably don't need to get like all the data that you're getting in the production environment because that data is usually just used for development purposes and there is no need to store data completely re redundant. Maybe, maybe it is. And this is also a key thing that the data engineer has to think about. And also another point that kind of ties in with processing pipelines and also the scalable uh, transformations is to actually build the infrastructure for everything to run on. Because to have all that, you probably need some, I don't know, maybe Spark clusters, maybe on AWS, you need some Lambda functions, you need maybe a workflow engine, and so on and so forth. And all that needs to run on some sort of virtual hardware and you need to build that infrastructure and you need to ensure that the infrastructure gets monitored, that it doesn't go down, that it's up all the time and that it fulfills its job. So now I'm a data scientist. So let's talk about what a data scientist um, actually does in a project. So again, here are the four things that I think are the most common uh, areas where a data scientist uh, works in. So let's start with, of course, exploring and understanding the data, because to really be able to reason about uh, a specific use case or the data, you really need to get a good uh, feeling about uh, what the data can provide, what the data is about, uh, get some domain knowledge and 
uh, yeah, to really understand what you are actually working with. A point that kind of goes along with the understanding of the data point is that um, also when you at the next step go to uh, the development of a machine learning model, you also, since you now kind of have an idea about the uh, data and you explore it, uh, it is much easier to do feature engineering to provide the features to the machine learning model that you also need to come up with to uh, really get good results for your predictions. Yeah, and as I already said, you of course need to develop a machine learning model and make sure that it fits certain criteria defined by your use case so that it performs well enough to actually do whatever yeah, it needs to do, right? A data scientist also implements transformations because when he gets the raw data, he also needs uh, to bring it somehow into uh, the form that then the machine model uh, requires. But this is usually done with uh, just sample data and not the full data set that is then later used in production maybe. So here the, it's not that focused on uh, scalability and yeah, high uh, throughput, but it's rather usually done in Jupyter notebooks or on the local machine. And then the data engineers get this uh, proof concept implementation basically, and then they need to make it more scalable and put it into production and into all the other systems that are then used for the real scale of data. All right, so if you enjoyed the video so far, please consider going completely insane on that like button. And also please consider leaving a comment down below and tell me what do you think about a topic and what are your experiences? So now that we talked about what a data scientist and a data engineer actually do in a project, now maybe let's talk about the skills each of those needs. So let's first start with the data engineer. So a data engineer, of course, needs um, good programming skills because all the work requires some sort of programming. For example, those highly scalable transformations you need to implement them, right? And also a data engineer needs a very good understanding um, of the infrastructure uh, provider that is used. So whether you use AWS or uh, the Google Compute Cloud, or maybe your own um, virtual cloud or yeah, any other provider, you need to know which services are available for you and you need to know those services that you are um, about to use so that you can actually make architectural decisions and uh, choose one tool over the other and yeah, really basically know how to build um, all the stuff that you need to build. And also since the data engineer has the word data also in its name, you really need a good understanding about data storage, uh, different ways to store data, um, different database engines, and also you need to know about the different kinds of data that are there. So for example, master data, transactional data, and so on. So that is also really important and might really influence your architectural decisions. All right, now let's talk about the skills that a data scientist actually needs. So first and foremost, you need to have a good understanding about the machine learning related topics, like for example, the training and test splits, uh, the different uh, metrics for uh, evaluating your models, different um, model implementations like decision trees or logistic regression, uh, deep neural networks and so on. So you really need to um, know what's going on, on the, in the machine learning side so that you are able to pick the right model for the right job and make yeah, informed decisions about the performance that you're actually achieving. And also besides those, um, yeah, machine learning topics that are more on the computer science um, side of things, you also need a good understanding about mathematics and especially statistics, because those are really the base for actual machine learning. And you need to understand things like uh, variance, standard deviations, and things like that to really understand what's going on in your machine learning models. And also you need to have some understanding of programming because you need to implement the machine learning models in some sort of programming language be it Python, be it R, be it Julia, whatever, but you need to know how to transform those mathematical concepts that you might know into a program that actually does something. And usually those programs are, as I stated earlier, 
kind of in a proof of concept state that then needs to be taken into production and be deployed. But nevertheless, you need to be familiar with a programming language that enables you to actually implement those machine learning models. So, but now let's talk about how this transfers to the everyday project life. So as a data engineer, the life might be a little bit more stressful because your work comes basically after the data scientist finished and you need to get things production ready. So you have the uh, stakeholders asking when, when will it be done? And also, since you are also responsible for running everything, yeah, you need to react to failures quickly and fix them and so that everybody is happy. So that might put on some pressure or at least a bit more pressure than on the data scientist side. At least this is from my experience. So as a data engineer, it's a little bit different. So it's more like a playground because sometimes you don't even know whether the use case that you have is even possible to be solved with the uh, possibilities of the machine learning models that you know, and also um, whether the data is actually sufficient for um, solving that use case. Sometimes just playing around and trying to come up with a solution that works and things like that can't really be stressed. Yeah, and also uh, working as a data scientist tends to be more of a fire and forget thing. So you come up with a proof of concept model that proves that you're able to come up with something that is good enough for the use case. And then you basically hand it over to the um, data engineers and they need to really put it into production. Of course, you also need to support them and tell them how things work. But in the end, your work is done, you hand it over and then it gets put into production basically for you. Of course, there might be uh, some bugs that you need to fix afterwards, but usually at that point you move on to the next problem to solve because, yeah, in my experience at least, in real life, companies aren't like Netflix where they really spend lots of effort to improve the machine learning models. In my experience, once the model is good enough, it's then about to move on to the next use case. And only when at some point the model isn't good enough anymore, then the model gets reiterated and checked again and then uh, improved upon. But usually, as I said, it's kind of like a fire and forget thing where you come up with something, hand it over and then move on. Now let's talk about supply and demand. Since data science is kind of hyped and everybody and their dog want to become a data scientist, there's like lots of people who want to get into the profession, but on the other side, the demand currently, at least as far as I see it, isn't that super high. Because since, as I said, usually when the use case is solved, it's time to move on, right? And so one data scientist can move kind of quickly between the use cases and cover a lot of things. On the other hand, a data engineer, you need to build all those architectures and all those automated systems and uh, make them production ready, implement monitoring, implement failure handling, implement everything that needs to be done basically, right? And this is a lot more effort than on the data science side. And also, in my experience, um, product teams usually consist of about four data engineers for each and every data scientist. So there is a lot more demand for data engineers than there is for data scientists. And also, since the yeah, profession of data engineering seems not to be that sexy as, um, yeah, for data scientists, there are not that many around. So it's actually quite hard to find some uh, when you need to staff your project. Um, at least that's what I noticed in my uh, everyday project life. Demand and supply works in your favor when you choose the career path of a data engineer. But again, that shouldn't be the only decision point. You also need to really think about, yeah, what do you like more and what do you think you can work for at least, I don't know, the next 10 years and still have some sort of fun? And that should be really the main focus that you need to put your again, focus on. But again, as I said, it might be harder to get into data science than it might be to get into data engineering. 
All right, that's it for this video. If you stayed up until this point, you might also consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, please consider going completely insane on that like button. And also please leave a comment down below and tell me what you think and what your experiences are. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.